Hi, this is Ed from Tokyo Fly Fishing Country Club. Welcome to Learning Fly Fishing Version 6, uh, which is still trial version. Uh, and any time of the presentation, when you come across something you don't understand, please press the stop button and read the text on the presentation. Let's go, shall we? Overview. What is fly fishing? Which is a hobby of a tradition, uh, first started as a commercial fishing methodology in ancient Asia and Europe, uh, which was still preserved in the form of Tenkara in Japan and Ala Barsesiana in Italia. Uh, these are two uh, geographically separated regions, but both places, which is a fishing methodology for the folks living in the mountain creek to catch mountain creek trout, which is an uh, interesting story, isn't it? Then later on, that was developed into today's recreational style as a hobby amongst first upper class in Britain, aside golf, in the 18th century which was soon adopted by travelling middle class, especially so for Japan when Scotsman Thomas Broke, uh, Grover, who is also uh, known as the founding father of modern day Japan, brought the western style of fly fishing in the late 19th century. So Japan actually caught on to western style of fly fishing from relatively early stage. Uh, then outdoor athletics became outdoor sporting culture in American Europe in the 20th century after two wars, then reintroduced to Japan by officers of occupation force who launched fisheries off Tokyo to help build a recreational uh, uh, location for, uh, for king, uh, king people. And then uh, casting itself is a sport of its own, developed by tournament casters. So nowadays the fly casting means casting beyond 40 meters, sometimes 60 meters. Some tournament casters can cast beyond 80 meters using specialized rod, which is ridiculously a fine distance. But this is a demanding physical exercise, so there's a strong element of a sport in this. And then, don't forget, it's a nature tour to aquatic landscape and wildlife. It's a great way to get connected with the natural environment. And then you have to learn habitats and behaviors of wildlife, otherwise you don't understand how fish moves or how bait is delivered to these fish. So it needs to ask to you to become a little uh, biologist in some way, and then you can get close enough to the beauty of wildlife. It's a great way to uh, do photography with it. And what kind of fish and where can you catch them? Um, you can just read the text, just all kinds of fish, in fresh water, salt water, you name it, they're a target for fly fish. Fly fishing is like a department store where you can choose your fish to go for. But most people start with a trout in river. And why fish strikes on artificial fly? Well, fish are unlike human, don't really have hands to investigate things, so they need to use its mouth and some bodily senses surrounding it to investigate objects. And fly produces particular profile, buoyancy and breathability to imitate natural bait which appeals to fish's appetite or stimulates a curiosity and aggressiveness of the fish so fish would attack the object using its mouth. In either case, angler needs to target fish willing to feed or active enough to react and attack fly. The sport. Just like any other sport being played, it has this little process to be learned. So fasting is reading and positioning. Reading, locate the fish and you have to read the situation before you start what you're going to do. So you could target fishing site, which is called sight fishing, or use experience or knowledge to guess where the fish is, which is called blind fishing. Then you need to think where you have to cast because that will be your beginning point for the presentation to be followed. And then from the feeding behavior of a fish in the surrounding circumstances, you need to make decision on what fly or system you're going to use. Then positioning. Once you're set, you position yourself as close as necessary to target for casting. You could do by standing, move slowly towards target in casting position, or stalking, move slowly towards target without letting yourself in fish's sight, then casting. The closest thing is called dapping, from the 0 meter to 2.7 meter, which is the length of a most of a single hand fry rod. You simply lay the fly just below the rod tip. Uh, in many occasions, this is the only way to catch fish, especially in the narrow uh, mountain river. And short cast is 2.7 meter to about 10 meter. You cast the fly line and lay it down. And middle cast is 10 to 20 meter to, this is possibly most often used uh, casting in lake and salt water. You cast the fly line and extend it down to where the presentation should begin. Then, and from time to time, you need to have a long cast, 20 to 30 meter range, to reach the exact spot where fish is, or reach the exact spot where you want to start your presentation. You need to make higher line speed and shoot it out. 
and then distant cast uh, beyond 30 meter longs. Uh, by having the skill, you may not need to shoot out like all 30 meters, but if you have ability to do that, then you can cast 20 meter comfortably, even in windy condition, So, which is very important to learn. Presentation, most important part of fly fishing. As soon as casting is successfully done, it is now time to appeal the fly to fish to mimic available baits or uh, make the enough uh, attraction so you can stimulate the attack from the fish. So you can make a natural presentation which is designed to uh, make your fly look like a natural bait or active presentation to stimulate fish into attacking your fly. And then you need to detect a strike and set hook. Detecting strike is when fish sucks the fly along with the surrounding water, it does show a sign whether on the leader, whether on the fly line, whether on the strike indicator which helps to visually confirm the strike. And not to mention, fish often misses the fly or turn back just in front of it. So it is important to tell whether the strike is positive or not. And then when you actually confirm the strike, you need to immediately set the hook. Uh, otherwise, you don't really uh, move on to the next stage. And fighting and landing. Of course, fish doesn't want to be caught by you. So uh, they would uh, challenge you for the fight to get away from the peril. Uh, you know, of course, because you, you have a set hook inside the fish's mouth and you have a line tension and the fish tends to get away from you on the opposite direction where you apply the force stick. So this kind of gives you an idea how to manipulate fish using your rod and of course you have a fly reel to retrieve the line. So you can use the both method to fight the fish until uh, it becomes ready to be landed. Then the landing. Uh, you have to retrieve the excessive line and get the fish as close as possible within your landing distance. If you're using the uh, landing net, you can, use, uh, uh, you can take advantage of the length of the net to catch the fish relatively easy compared to a uh, line catcher hand landing, which is uh, a little more difficult. Examining and releasing. So you catch the fish and you want to make something out of it, you like to examine that. Uh, many people take a photo record these days, just bring the waterproof digital camera and take the snapshot of the fish. Or when you're actually uh, on the guided trip or you're fishing with the salmon, you can ask your friend, your guide, to take the snapshot of you holding the fish. Uh, but be careful because fish skin is not accustomed to be touched by dry hands or uh, dry surface, uh, which will cause skin damage by the burn. So make sure you use the proper landing equipment and get your hands wet before touching any part of the fish. And releasing, very important, is never touch the gills of a fish, which is the single most vital organ for the survival of fish. Uh, they have a very complex system within this gill to absorb the oxygen inside the water, uh, which is very, very sensitive. So just imagine, like, a, if, if you fish, it's like, uh, it's like a human exposing lung uh, out into the air to breathe some oxygen out. So it's that sensitive. So please don't touch the gills of a fish and simply pick the fly out of a fish's mouth and in many occasions fish does swallow the fly deep beyond the reach then in that case just cut the tippet off at the closest to the mouth and when releasing make sure the stream of water containing oxygen go through fish's mouth to help it breathe back to normal state okay now the equipment basic equipment you have to get is a fly tackle uh, what composes fly tackle is fly rod which controls line and you it cast the line to target and you need to have a fry reel to store your line and the whole rig. It also it helps you uh, reel the fish back in when you're fighting, uh, especially with a fry reel which comes with drag system. And then you need to have a back in line, which mostly stays inside the reel unless the time of fighting fish. It's a backup line to fight stronger fish and also it pr uh, provides foundation uh, to, uh, for other lines to be stored on the reel. And you need to have a fly line. A uh, fans 10 meter part of the line decides the weight, we'll get to that later. A remaining part of the uh, line is called running line, which provides the distance. And you need to tie leader to fly line, which is uh, made of a transparent monofilament line with a taper design. So it helps to turn over your fly much, much easier. Then you tie tippet at the end of a leader, which is an extension of a leader to provide this little natural section to make the fly present it in a more natural way. At the end, you tie fly to the tip. And fly rod and fly line in close focus. So we just discussed about the weight class of a fly rod and fly line needs to be matched. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, weight uh, given to fly rod and fly line. From zero weight to uh, some people fish 18 weight. Um, but most relatively, uh, 
situation, 80% of the time, you will need to choose from 4 weight, 6 weight, or 8 weight fly rod and fly line, which covers most of the situation from river to even ocean. And the line comes with a multiple specification. DT stands for double taper, which is usually provided for the lower uh, line class uh, fly line. <coughs> Is designed to uh, provide a maximum performance performance in close range, but most of the time you will be using the WF or weight forward uh, fly line, designed for uh, better cast in distance. And there are two types of line. One is a floating line, which floats on the surface of the water, and a sinking line. Uh, depending on the different uh, sinking speed, you have an intermediate line to fast sinking line fly reel and backing line. So you have to tie your backing line to the arbor or the spinning section of a fly reel. And then you tie the backing line to the end of a fly line. And then you need to tie a leader system and tip it to the fly line. Uh, it should be the easiest uh, taper leader you can use. It's the same length as your fly rod. So most of the case, you probably purchase a nine feet fly rod, then please get the taper leader, which is nine feet length and then you need to add a tippet at the end of it. It's a buffer to give a slack to make fly move more naturally uh, which is uh, please match the diameter of the end of a tippet which comes in what's called 6x, 5x, x system to diameter of the tippet and then at the end you tie your fly and there are many different kinds of a fly and uh, mainly they're uh, categorized into four different uh, genres. One is a dry fly or float fly, which imitates the uh, bait which sticks on the surface of the water. And the nymphing shrimp, uh, which imitates the aquatic uh, life form, which relatively moves, uh, makes a smaller move. And the wet fly, which has the same element as nymph, but designed to uh, provoke a fight from fish by having lots of a reflective material I think and streamer which strictly imitates bait fish and you have to use this with continuously retrieving uh, action it's like using a uh, plastic lure basic accessories you need are line snips you need to clip off a uh, fly away from the tippet you need to clip off a uh, tippet from the tippet roll so this is an essential item to have. Of course, you need to have a fly box to store all your flies you are using the day. And you need to have a fly line lubricants to keep the fly line clean and smooth for casting. So you can maximize what you need. And fishing aid is nice to have. A floating agent if, when you're using dry fly to keep your uh, dry fly dry. So it floats high as intended. And it does help to have a sinker. Keep fly uh, in a deeper layer of water if you're using the nymph or wet fly. And I would strongly recommend environmentally safe tungsten patchy type, which is available from the shop. And strike indicator, which tells you uh, uh, it's made of a bright color, so it can tell you when the uh, fish is striking your fly. Um, some people don't really need it, but sometimes uh, it's essential to help you tell exactly when fish is taking the fly. So please uh, keep in your arsenal. And then you need to have a landing gears. Uh, landing net will make it landing fish easy and harmless to fish, which is, which is essential. And forceps, which is also essential for river fish. It pinches the hook out from fish's mouth, and also uh, you could hold a small size fly when you are trying to uh, put the tip through it. And then on uh, when you're actually uh, going for a bigger fish, or in occasions when you where you can't use your landing net, maybe you. You're in, a, you're in a space too small, like uh, on the top of a kayak, then it helps have a fish grip and pliers. And positioning aid, uh, most likely the case, you will see people wearing waders and wading boots. It does let you go into the water while protecting your feet from obstacles. And it does help you to get closer to water or help you cross the river or current to get to the destination. And if the water is too deep, you can use a floater in combination with wader and boots or you, perhaps you might want to use kayak to keep yourself mobile. And I didn't list it up here, some people actually wear a wetsuit. They swim to a rocky point and then start casting from there, uh, which is rather a new way of thing to do. Okay, casting. What is conventional casting? What is fly casting? So fly casting is different. Conventional casting, you, you just, you're casting something tied at the end of a line which has enough weight to be thrown out. So you pull the line out by swinging the weighty object tied at the end. 
then the line follows. However, in fly casting, what's tied at the end of a line has virtually no weight. So the line is weighted. So this is exactly what you do. You use your rod to push the fly line into the air, and you do the same thing forward and backwards. Uh, when, you know, uh, when the kinetics are created, when ready to lay down the line, uh, or just simply shoot it out. So what you do in fly casting, so first, acceleration will rod tip. As you give the rod firmly, accelerate the rod tip in one direction horizontally, you're applying force and that force is transferred to the tip of the rod and kinetics is created. And then, when you're actually uh, moving the rod motion into the four certain stop, the, all the kinetics will transfer to the tip of a rod which bends, then pass the power into the fly line. Then the fly line is cast into the air and then the head part of the fly line flies in the air, consumes the kinetics provided by your uh, cast motion. The head of a fly line uh, continues to fly in the air. This is important when you actually have to form this aerodynamic shape known as loop so you can deliver your fly line to the farthest distance. And then at the end, uh, the fly, at the end of a flight, kinetics are passed down to the leader, then passed down to the tippet and the fly. Then that's the finish of a one uh, single trouble of a cast. Uh, but of course, you're going to repeat that. So actually, when you actually have an opportunity to look at other fly casters, please pay attention to the correct position of a fly cast. Your tip, tip of your fly rod and your loop should be traveling back and forth in the correct path in a parallel motion. This is the only way to form a loop. So it's like, if, imagine you're holding a, a painting roller brush and painting the ceiling. You move your roller brush back and forth, but you have to, you stop at the, you make a positive stop to where you want to stop uh, roller to paint. So imagine you're painting your ceiling with it. So the tip of your roller stays on the same horizontal axis. Same thing for the rod tip. But watch how rod tip travels in the wrong manner. So some people we cannot make the uncontrolled motion or unparalleled motion of a rod tip would create a wrong loop or we simply call it non-loop, which uh, breaks the dynamics uh, of all things you uh, put lots of effort to. So make sure uh, you check because it's mostly caused by arm making swing motion instead of a parallel motion, or it could be caused by not stopping rod at the right position or sometimes it could be caused by line hand uh, not holding the line firmly and losing control of a line. So basic practice, make sure you understand the work of the two hands. In single hand fly rods, you need to use rod hand, which is holding your rod, to grip the rod in position and then control the rod. And very important to remember, the wrist of your rod hand or rod wrist, you need to keep it locked. When the wrist is not locked, it doesn't make the stable parallel motion. Instead, it would make wide swinging motion, which opens your loop and eventually going to go bad loop, non-loop will be formed. And your line hand, it grips fly line tight when casting and manage fly line when fishing. So you use two hands to do the fly casting. Uh, just to quickly touch on uh, work of two hands in two hand fly rods case. So your upper hand, which kind of similar to the holding the single hand frame rod, except uh, it's not so much about uh, holding a rod in a position, but it, it's providing control to the rod and also grip fry line tight because you don't have a line hand in this case. And underhand, which is the bottom of hand, which is holding the end of a rod, which should hold the rod in position firmly and adds force to rod when casting. So practice number one, forward cast basic. First, let 15 feet or so line out of the tip of a fry rod and then move the rod slowly backward until the line hangs in D shape from the end of your rod. And then do the forward cast. Make sure both rod hand and line hand are tight and make sure you stop the rod after the acceleration or otherwise loop won't be formed to cast your line forward. So when you successfully do the forward cast, just let it complete the flight, then lay it down on the surface, water or ground. Practice two, pick up and lay down. Let 15 feet or so line out from the end of your line, end of your rod, then pick up into the back cast in one motion. Then do the forward cast and let it complete the flight, then put down to the ground. So this is a very good practice to make sure you have a firm grip on both rod hand and line hands. Practice three, force casting challenge. Okay, let the 15 feet or so line out 
and pick that up into back cast. And then do the forward cast and keep repeating the same process as long as you can until you get tired. So this kind of gives you a strong foundation for doing the force cast, which is very important to cast making a middle cast and eventually to the long cast. Practice four, force cast and lay down. So you start the force cast and control that for a few rounds and then extend the forward cast, confirm the turnover, then lay it down. Then you're ready to fish using this aerial cast. Practice number five, force cast and extend the forehead. First, start the force cast, control it for a few rounds, then extend the line little by little and try to extend to 30 feet long in the air, which is the head part of the fly line, which you later need to make the shoot. And practice six, force cast and shoot. Start the force cast, control it and extend it to 30 feet long in the air. On the final forward cast, let go of line hand to shoot the line out. After you're forming the good uh, kinetical loop on the, using the 30 feet long, which is the head part of the fly line, then you can shoot it out to let the head pull your running line out. That's what shoot is. You need this to make a middle cast, a long cast, especially so in the situation when you're fishing lake or fishing uh, ocean. Okay, the recap. Next steps, uh, very important, learn how to cast. I strongly recommend you to watch Mel Krieger's Essence of a Fly Casting 1 which comes in DVDs. I myself took this lesson many years ago and also took a personal lesson from Mr. Mel Krieger. Uh, he passed away and he was always a sad thing, uh, which I strongly recommend this, which is great instructor, great instruction. And it does help greatly You need if, when you take lessons from uh, instructors, please find a certified instructor. I recommend the instructor certified by IFF, International Federation of Fly Fisher. And practice, practice, practice. And fly tackles and accessories, I would strongly suggest to go to Benny with a rental taco or rent a taco from your instructor or rent a taco from your friends in the beginning. So you don't have to invest on the taco, you don't really fit. And then you choose four, six or eight weight starter kit, which is fit your physique first. Of course, you like to uh, make the match of your taco to the fish you like to catch. However, you come with a different physique at the starting point. So let's choose a taco, which is fit your physique first. Then consult with experienced anglers for spe specific fishing situation to choose the right tackle and uh, accessories so you don't waste your money. And then fish an easy field before stepping up. Let's start with a pond type stock fishery with enough back space so you can comfortably make the cast. And then you can try river type stock fishery which is usually uh, come in a more concise space to make your uh, aerial cast a little bit difficult to do. Then you can go with the experts for more challenging terrains in the first few years because otherwise you might get hurt or you might get too stressed out by snagging your rig into the branch of a tree or anything. Okay, for further instruction, you can contact me uh, at email at the below uh, information. I've been fly fishing since 1996 uh, in New York City. And then I'm a user of a both single hand and two hand fry rod experience using with a from the fry rod with zero weight to 18 weight fry rod, which is a ridiculous rod designed to catch tuna. And more than 80 species of fish on fry rods I caught. And I do provide lessons and guide service occasionally. So if you want, please contact me at the below email. Thank you for listening. Tight lines and good luck.